Today is day 879 of our transformation into Trump-topia. Now, I want to kick off with this most recent tweet threat that the great uh, orange gold leader of ours has uh, tweeted out ahead of his big uh, rally in Florida. One million deportations in a single deportation action is logistically not possible, given the number of officers available. You can go look that up and check. That's what I understand to be the case. More than that, more important than that, Trump is a classic scam artist that he promises you the world and then expects you to put up with whatever he actually delivers, which is going to be a lot less than the world. Some really obvious examples, which I get it, Trump fans are in categorical denial of this, but that wall that he promised has not been built. Is uh, Hillary Clinton in jail? Hasn't happened. In fact, he hasn't really been able to do anything about uh, Hillary Clinton, right? Uh, so, 879 days in office. And here's a fun fact that, that ties into this uh, tweet storm that kicks off his official re-election campaign. He filed the paperwork to run for re-election the day after he got sworn in. Which uh, may or may not seem crazy, but it's definitely not the usual thing that happens. Uh, and uh, and here he is, uh, kind of just doubling down on the same sort of rhetoric, which any clear-minded observer understands to be bullshit. He never built a wall. Some samples were built in California, very close to where I am, and I was able to speak to people who actually lived in the area, and they're like, no, yeah, they were just samples, and then they got knocked down. He's used a lot of instances like that. There's another program in another state that was uh, upgrading sections of wall. It was a pre-existing program. It had nothing to do with Trump. But he used it, rhetorically speaking, as, quote, proof that he was building his great wall. He hasn't done jack shit. Remember that he was going to build it himself? Because he alone can fix our problems? All right. Here's some fact-checked, verified, um, independently confirmed fucking hardcore facts about dear old Donnie. He has gone golfing 187 times since becoming president, and it has cost us, the taxpayers, $103 billion with a B. That isn't 103 million, is it? No, that's a thousand dollars. That's a, no. I'm sorry, I was wrong. See, look, I can update my opinion when I realize I was wrong. It's 103 million. Still, that's outrageous. Okay, 187 daytime visits to golf clubs since the inauguration. This is um, from TrumpGolfCount.com. And uh, they claim to be a third-party, um, independent, non-biased organization that's just tracking the facts in their About Us section. They say, why are we doing this? Quote, quoting Donald J. Trump, 
I'm going to be working for you. I'm not going to have time to go play golf. They proceed to say, our president made a promise to the American people. Here, we track his fulfillment of that promise. They also have uh, a week-by-week comparison chart. You should go check this out. I can't explain it. Uh, like, I won't do it justice. But it's a graph chart that plots out weeks since inauguration and golf outings and compares Trump versus Obama. And you can click on different factors to, like, only see certain data sets. So that's a fun fact. And there's a bunch more things on this page besides um, just those numbers, you know. Um, but I don't want to, you know, ruin the page. Go visit them. Check them out. And then, hey, if you disagree, look into them. Find out. Give me some proof that they aren't what they claim. So far, they seem pretty legit. They haven't inflated the numbers. They haven't reported fake golf outings. They just track the facts of Trump going to play golf a lot. Is there outrage? No. As somebody on a talking news show uh, on the big cable channels was saying pretty interestingly just the other day, uh, might have, actually, it might have been today. I don't know. Uh, and, and again, if you're new to the show, trust, I get it. News Corp media is pretty corrupt. But a lot of the people there are just people, and they're really just doing their job, in my humble opinion. I had done episodes about that. We can get into it again on another episode. Uh, but someone uh, was expressing an opinion, okay, uh, that what motivates the Trump base is an aspirational uh, attachment. They want to be like Trump. And the thing is, Trump knows how to play to that because he's a narcissist and he wants people to want to be like him. The problem is, the person that he actually is, uh, that his own behavior exposes him to be, is not a particularly great person. And he's most definitely not so hot about keeping promises. Uh, let's go to another website. I've mentioned them before, of course. Trump Tracker at GitHub, github.io. Again, a place that seems to check out. I haven't seen any gross misrepresentations. I just see a very orderly, easy-to-read collection of facts that can be verified. And they've got references and links to places where you can go, oh, okay, here's the information. Here's where they get their information. So uh, out of 879 days in office, they, they try to track 174 of the promises that Trump made to the American people. And as of today, here's their, their overview breakdown, okay? 18 of the 174 promises are currently in progress. Is that a strong number? I don't know. Sounds weak to me. 21 of the 174 promises have uh, are marked as achieved. They, they did it. Whatever it is they, they promised, they made it happen. Uh, eight of them seem to have been a big compromise. Now here's where the numbers get interesting. 43 of the 174 promises have been blatantly broken. And that's a lot more than 18. And that's more than double of 21. So we can stop right there and go, hmm, he's categorically someone that only fulfills promises that are politically convenient to fulfill, and other promises, as soon as they become politically inconvenient to fulfill, he must abandon them. And the last statistic seems to endorse this idea or further back it up. Out of the 174 promises made during uh, the last election, 84 of them have not even uh, been initiated in any way, shape, or form. Let's take a look at some of the broken promises. There's a lot. Broken promises, 43. 
propose a constitutional amendment to impose term limits on all members of Congress. Right the fuck out the window. Have you heard him mention that ever again? Of course not. It was only convenient for him to promise that because it rallied the base in their anger against the Democrats, right? That's what all politics is. Get angry at that other side of your fellow Americans. Get angry at that group of your fellow Americans, please, and then tell them that they suck. That's how your politics works here. All right, proceeding. Institute a hiring freeze on all federal employees to reduce the federal workforce through attrition. Ironically, completely broken premise. Although... He has indeed left a lot of um, high-level, important cabinet positions uh, mostly empty or filled in by an uh, in interim acting cabinet member. And there's an interesting twist to that. He likes to make it sound like that's some sort of logistical advantage, but it really isn't because... An interim acting secretary of blah de blah department has not the level of authority, does not have the kind of powers that a fully approved of cabinet member would after having gone through the legal process of getting the job. Now, I'm not here to defend our legal system. It's fucked and corrupt long before Trump was even born. Okay, it's been fucked and corrupt since the the British came here and started stealing land. Since everybody, whoever they were, the British, the Italian, the Spanish, they all came here and started stealing land from the natives. Okay, so the entire uh, continent of uh, North and South Americas is uh, pretty screwy in its core psychology, but that's a whole nother episode. Let's stick with these promises. Uh, a complete ban on foreign lobbyists raising money for American elections. Hmm, how fascinating. He did not keep that promise. Right? Like, hmm, how strange. In fact, one of uh, his more recent controversial statements on the news uh, would be seemingly an extension to the exact opposite logic because he doesn't think that getting uh, opposition uh, intel uh, from foreign agents is a big deal. That's not a big deal. If... If some foreign country wants to give me information, eh, I'll take it. Even though that's categorically against the law. And has been. I don't know how long. Uh, but, okay. So, uh, he never banned foreign lobbyists. Uh, he never labeled China a currency manipulator. He did not direct the Secretary of Commerce and U.S. Trade to identify all foreign trading abuses in an unfair I impact on American workers. That, that one just sounded too complicated on its face. Um... He promised that he would lift the restrictions of the production of $50 trillion worth of job-producing energy reserves, including shale, oil, natural gas, and clean coal. And although he clearly has bent over backwards to try and accommodate um, the toxic energy uh, uh, conglomerates, he didn't fulfill that promise. He was going to cancel every unconstitutional executive action memorandum and order issued by President Obama. Remember that? He was going to do that on day one. He, that's one of the many things he promised to do on day one. I'm just going to strip back everything President Obama did. He hasn't really. He hasn't even successfully um, revoked Obamacare at all. Which is kind of, He's only just sort of made everything worse in that department. But that's a whole other episode. Uh, cancel all federal funding to sanctuary cities. Now, he certainly aggravated them, but he hasn't canceled all federal funding. Cancel visas to foreign countries that won't take criminally, uh, criminal illegal immigrants back. Um, I don't think he's done that. Uh, middle class tax relief and simplification act. He did revamp the tax code, or at least, you know, somebody working on his behalf did, but it didn't really bring that much tax relief to the middle class. Uh, end the Offshoring Act. Hasn't done that. I wonder how many offshores accounts he has. Uh, implement the American Energy and Infrastructure Act. He's announced Infrastructure Week multiple times and then proceeded to do absolutely nothing about infrastructure. School Choice and Education Opportunity Act. Nothing. Repeal and Replace Obama Act. A clusterfuck of stupid that's just fucked up healthcare and hasn't done anything. It hasn't achieved the Republican goal and it hasn't um, really completely eliminated Obamacare. Affordable Child Care and Elder Care Act. Uh, he must have only made that promise once because I don't remember hearing about that. 
End Illegal Immigration Act. Okay. Uh, he's actually... New study, uh, new statistical analysis shows that the situation at the border has actually gotten worse since year one of Trump's, Trump's presidency. We'll have to do an, a special, like, focused episode on that. Restoring Community Safety Act. Restoring the National Security Act. Cleaning up Corruption in Washington Act. Huh. If I become president, we're all going to be saying Merry Christmas again. Okay. But what if you don't celebrate Christmas, dude? Uh, he's never taking a vacation while serving as president. Bullshit. Assigning a special prosecutor to start criminal investigation into Hillary Clinton for a use of private email server while serving as Secretary of State. Hasn't done dick. We won't tweet anymore after I'm president. It's not presidential. I think that's a, a direct quote. Uh, he's tweet raging, rage tweeting like crazy. I will fight for the LGBTQ community. Whew, that was an empty promise. He's going to leave Social Security as is. Hmm. The wealthy should pay more. The wealthy should pay more. What is that about? There's three uh, reference links there. I wonder what they're pointing to. A full list of Donald Trump. Here's a different. A full list of Donald Trump's rapidly changing policy positions. It's an article from uh, a, a boring regular media outlet. Um, and then from NPR. What we know about Trump House GOP tax plans so far. And so let's. There's articles about that. Now, if you don't trust any media, then I guess you shouldn't be trusting me either. But uh, let's continue with this list. He's going to get rid of most corporate tax loopholes. That'd be nice. Going to get rid of income tax for some earners. I don't know what that means. He's going to scrap an earlier plan entirely here. New tax brackets. Trump took his earlier tax plan offline before major economic policy address. No, I guess... That's a very long, complicated sentence. Tax brackets 10%, 25%, 12%, 25 and 33%. These brackets are more closely mimics his party's past views on taxes. In other words, he f bullshitted us about taxes and com then reverted his plan and turned it into something much more normal uh, and typical of the Republican Party, which he's supposed to be, right, changing, right? He's supposed to be changing the Republican Party. He was going to no longer charge income tax to single individuals earning less than $25,000 per year or couples that earn less than fifty. Apparently, included in that promise, he was going to require these individuals to fill out a one-page form with the Internal Revenue Service that states, quote, I win. I don't remember that one from the campaign, but that's funny. Uh, he was going to check the, uh, he was going to fix the background check system used when purchasing guns to ensure states are properly uploading criminal and health records. He's going to provide more funding for police training. On the first day in office, he was going to terminate Obama's executive orders related to immigration. He was going to get rid of sanctuary cities. Right. He was going to stop spending money on space exploration until the United States could fix its potholes and encourage private sex, uh, space exploration uh, instead. And then he suddenly changed his mind and decided we need Space Force. I guess because Space Force sounds cooler than um, fixing potholes. He was going to deport all criminal illegal immigrants within one hour of being sworn in. Um, three years later, he's just now making a huge threat of deporting a million people. And, like I said, I don't think that's logistically possible. He was going to get rid of gun-free zones. Quote, my first day, it gets signed, okay? My first day, there's no more gun-free zones. Hasn't done dick. He was going to save Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security without cutting benefits. No one's even begun to really address those problems. No Muslims would be allowed to enter the United States as immigrants or visitors. Remember the total and complete Muslim ban that was never actually a ban? It was just there to give red meat to the base and to offend Muslims. That's what he achieved. Negotiate the release of all U.S. prisoners held in Iran. Before taking office, uh, uh, okay, 
Rather than throw the Chinese president a state dinner, he was going to buy a McDonald's hamburger and say we got to get down to work. That was funny. Um, and then he was going to get rid of Common Core, which I don't believe he has, right? Okay, so that's the, the list of uh, the 43 completely broken promises. And then the uh, the list of not starting ones is even longer, right? It's like 80 some odd... 84 promises that he stated and that have just not not even been initiated. Um, it's almost irrelevant, though, because the really hardcore base, they have given Trump their blind faith. So when he says, who are you going to believe, me or your lying eyes? They all gleefully shout, you, our eyes are liars. Uh, which is the hallmark of, of early tyrannical brainwashing. Like, what truly genuine American patriot would do that, is my question, right? What innocent person would behave the way Trump acts? Uh, it just doesn't, it doesn't compute. Why would someone who believes in freedom and democracy simultaneously demand that his supporters irrationally only believe in him and no one else? Like, that's anathema to democracy. That's the exact opposite of freedom. That's mental slavery. As I've said before, friends, um, what they want us to do is fight each other. And that's why he's been given free reign to be a clusterfuck of fail, which is what I said his presidency would be. Day one, watched him come down the escalator and said, oh, God, not this this guy. Like, cause, you know, he's a known entity. He's been a scam artist for, I don't know, most of my adult life from stake sales to a bogus school of real estate, right? So I'm personally not surprised by any of this. What is astounding to me is that people have invested such an ego attachment to him that they'd rather irrationally hate their own fellow Americans than actually cope with the problems that we all face together. Now, I really shouldn't be that astounded because, I mean, cognitively speaking, I've understood for a really long time that that is precisely the agenda at play here. Ideological political echo chambers are not about discovering the most the most powerful politician or the most uh, you know, the most upright or righteous politician. It's not about finding politicians that will really do the job. Ideological echo chamber, uh, political brainwashing, for, you know, to call it really what it is, it only has one real purpose, and that's to keep you caught up in echo chamber bullshit so that you don't notice that every politician claims that they're different and then turns around and proceeds to act pretty much the same as every other politician, which is to say power and money are more important than any kind of fighting for the little guys once they get into office. And yeah, I know that Trump base really, really, really believed Trump would be different. But here we are, uh, you know, halfway through the first thing, the first uh, term in office, and he's just kind of repeating himself. He's just repeating himself, doubling down on his same bullshit promises 
and uh, doing all the right things to bring us closer to a plausibly deniable uh, artificial war. Like, it, he's bringing us closer and closer to some sort of conflict with Iran and or North Korea. In a way that's like, oh, well, it wasn't our fault. We didn't start it. That's what I mean by plausible deniability fake war. Like, all wars are fake, yo. Shooting someone in the skull with a bigger gun does not win your safety, does not ensure your freedom. It only perpetuates trauma that ego loves to cultivate into more violence, which then perpetuates more trauma, which ego uses to get deeper and deeper into us and infect us with the same corruption that impacts people of power. I think I said very early on in the podcast, politicians become figureheads for our state of mind as a collective. Now, it isn't a one-to-one direct correlation. Oftentimes, it's like art imitating life. Um, The leadership you know, and the way they behave might be aspirational and inspirational, or they might be like a mirror in the face of our own grotesqueness. I understand why Trump supporters want him to be different. He promised it, and he behaved. He spoke like he walked a different walk. He talked a different talk, for sure. But if you really look at it, if you really zoom back, if you really zoom back, how much of it was that original? Make America Great Again was not actually his original slogan. Do a little research and you'll realize that he lifted it, copied it, stole it from Ronald Reagan back in the early 80s. Now, he might have done that knowingly. He might have done that absentmindedly. But it's not very original. And he's not really living up to it. He's, is America great again? No. America's busy hating itself right now. Really hard. And each other. Americans are busy hating each other. Really hard. This cluster fuck of fail is a new extension of the basic recipe that sits at the core of all ideological echo chamber uh, constructs, whether they're on the left side of the political spectrum or on the right side of the political spectrum or in one of the alternative directions on the political spectrum. If it's become an ideological construct, deep down at its core, it's not really solving problems. It's pitting you against your fellow human beings and filling you with pride about something you really probably don't have any direct influence over. And that pride blinds you to the psychological, emotional trauma that we're inflicting on one another with all this political, ideological arguing. Instead of solving problems, everyone's busy hating each other. And that shit adds up, yo. That shit compiles. That shit spreads. That shit gets worse and worse and worse and worse. Now, there's a lot of people out there who saw through Trump right away, but then they made the mistake that, in my humble opinion, is an ego trap. Uh, Because this is what the corruption system wants. Even if you're outside of the political echo chamber... Or you don't seem to, you know, I don't subscribe to any specific political ideology, right? And I'm not alone. Two-thirds of Americans don't vote. So all of this political drama is contingent on one-third of the population participating in the political system. And the political system is self-aware of that. Like, those in power like it when fewer people vote. On both sides. They talk a lot of surface about bringing in the bigger tent and all that stuff. But they know. The people really running the game 
pushing the pedals, pulling the strings, they know that if we keep the voting participation at its like bare minimum, then everybody's easier to manipulate and keep arguing and keep separated. And it's easier and easier and easier and easier to not solve any problems, to not keep any political promises. The solution isn't more hate. The solution isn't more fighting. The solution isn't a bloody revolution. The solution is intellectual, emotional, physical, and spiritual healing. And if I sound like a broken record about that, I'm sorry. But I'm trying to pump out some of this positive healing mentality, energy, and spiritual activity instead of dumping out negativity and hate, right? I don't hate Trump supporters. I'm just concerned that they're going to go through some traumatic adjustment when they ultimately have to really confront with some hindsight that Trump was really no different than any other political puppet, except for how noisy he was. And I'm concerned, conversely, that my uh, friends and, and family and brothers and sisters on the other sides of the political spectrum are going to have an equally difficult time adjusting to the simple fact that as as uh, as much as they want to believe that their favorite politician is upright and true, the corruption is so pervasive and it is operating at such a subtle level. It's not just money. It's not just political power. The surface problems are only on the surface, yo. And those are big and complicated and fucked up enough. But what the system wants is for us to radically ignore the root of the problem that's deeper down below the surface. And if there's anything Trump has been really successful of, uh, successful at uh, in his tenure, it's that. And that is what I've got to say about that. As always, thank you kindly for listening. This has been the Almost Daily Zencast. With your humble host, the incorrigible Mr. Zappa. Until next time, may peace, love, and grooviness blossom in your heart. <laughs>